<laughs> hello hello my friends how are you guys doing today my name is Rodgan. i'm an artist i'm a designer i'm a cartoonist but more importantly than anything today i am your instructor so hello, my friends. How are you guys doing? Are you guys doing good? Are you guys having a good Sunday? Are you guys enjoying your morning? Did you have your coffee? I hope so. If you guys want to get better at drawing today, all I ask is that you guys come join us and that you guys like the stream. I will teach you guys a couple little nifty tricks that will help you with your overall character design and just foundations in general. And today's lesson is going to be how to draw the body in a simple way. How to simplify the body. Why do we want to? Because a lot of the times we find ourselves, let's say, in public and we want to draw somebody. And we don't really know how to measure things for people. We don't know how to make people look like they're moving. Or a lot of the times we have issues with the proportions of things. So if somebody's going to be running out and about, then you're going to be doing some photography or something like that. And you just want to be able to draw some simple humans. I'm going to teach you guys how to do that today. So that you guys have your outings to the park to the zoo, to the beach, and you guys will be able to draw your people there. Cool. So that is going to be our lesson today. We are going to explain a handful of different techniques to gesturize people. And maybe, hopefully, with any luck, one of them will stick with you today, and you guys will have leveled up after today. If you plan to stay for our lesson today, all I ask is that you guys like the stream. If you guys have any power over it and you guys want to help even more, you guys can share it with anybody that is going to be uh, happy to receive it. Not just a random person, but only if there is a person that might be able to actually receive it, then share it. And with that being said, let's, uh, let's just start into the lesson. I'm not going to ask for likes. I'm not going to ask for a certain minimum. Uh, I woke up late, so it's my fault that we are not going to have the engagement that we normally have. So, and that's fine. It's a little more exclusive. So, the human body. Let's zoom in. Pew, 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 pew. The human body consists of a couple elements that need to be um, really, really, really reinforced. And those elements come in three big body parts. It comes in the form of your ribcage. Your ribcage is a very complicated area that has a bunch of different parts that need to be addressed. So this is normally one of the hardest parts to learn to draw, especially the top part. From there, we go on to the hip bones, and the hip bones are two angled ovals that hang from the bottom of your ribcage and give you access to your legs. So this and this it's normally the only two things that you really need to learn about the human body in order to actually understand everything. Now, the head in general as well is very important to understand, but it comes with a lot of stylization for most people. So understanding just the sizing of it in comparison to the actual body tends to be enough to understand how to proceed with that body part. Your appendages are going to come from the side of your body. You're going to have to find a contour point, and you have those within the structures that I'm going to teach you guys. If you have the outside of your arm, whatever depth you want your arm to be, you just draw a little circle, and that little circle becomes the volume for your arm. This also becomes the pectoral muscles, and if you go around, it gives you your back muscles. So it gives you a ton of information really, really quickly. Having those just naturally occur within that little egg and within that little compass is very, very useful. Egg, 
circle, compass. Okay? This becomes your neck. So you can either draw your head about this width, or you can just add extra volume at the top of your neck. Ta -da! And then draw whatever head size you want. Okay? But that's your neck. From here to here, this is your collarbone. If you don't are not familiar with your collarbone, your collarbone is the weird bone that sticks out of your ribcage. And your shoulder and your pectoral muscle seem to be attached to it, and also the muscles in the back and your neck. So all these muscles attach to this point, even your arm, by the way. So your arm bone is there, and then your muscles wrap around. So that is why it's very important to learn to simplify this concept right here very simply. And it's very easy to do if you think about it like the eye of Sauron, or just like an eyeball. Just thinking about it like an eyeball is very easy to think about. right? If you think about it like an eyeball, you have access to a collarbone. Perfect. If you see the eye as the top of your egg, then you can start connecting the other body parts. Okay, so that part doesn't have to be overly complicated, but it normally is because a lot of people don't know how to explain it in a way that makes sense. So if you have a circle and you draw a compass, that is now your neckline, that becomes your rib cage, and that becomes the area where your arms are going to come out from. So that's super simple. And then from there, you want to see even easier, even easier, take that same circle Go up your spine, which is at the back of the compass. That same circle, redraw it. Guess what? You just drew a jaw. <laughs> Boom. How hard was that? That was actually really easy, right? That was incredibly easy. So let's do it again. Circle. Compass. At the back of your compass, you're going to have your spine. At the front, you're going to have the front of your ribcage. This exact same circle, copy it in space, draw it separately, and now you have the bottom of your neck. Ooh, so hard. Oh, it's so incredibly hard to draw the neck, Rod. It's not. <laughs> I do teach better than your art teacher. See, 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 out of art teachers, uh, I'm like a legendary Pokemon. I might not be the, the legendary Pokemon, but I am one of the legendary Pokemon. <laughs> Definitely a shiny. So as you guys can see, it doesn't have to be complicated, right? It doesn't have to be. You can choose either way for the jaw. You can have it go this way. You can have it turn in the other way. So you have a little bit of the underneath, underneath, underneath the side. <laughs> Sometimes you have to add a little bit of space here for like the more real shapes, right? Sometimes you have to add a little bit of brain space in the back of the ear. Sometimes. But that seems like a really, really simple like a way to draw it, right? Especially if you already know how to draw your body. If this collarbone entry of your rib cage is going to be the same width as your neck, well, then that means that your jaw structure is just a little bit wider. And if you just taper it, you have access to that. And like I said, this could be your jaw going this way, going around your neck, or it could be the other way around. So it gives you a nice little dynamic look from the get-go. Like you don't even have to worry about getting that little tiny tilt. <laughs> and of course, this, the length of it could be different. If you make it a little bit shorter, it's going to be a little bit better, more like an actual cartoon. If you make it bigger, let's say you take this circle and you make that circle really big. And then you make the other circle really small. <laughs> well, this is going to give you a nice big taper. 
right? This is going to make your, your muscles look so much bigger. If you make the space smaller between this, you end up with things like the Hulk, superheroes. I am the Hulk. I smash. <laughs> Rod Gun, are you looking for a wife? I cook clean and I'm flexible. <laughs> You're funny. No, I'm not looking for a wife. <laughs> but that, that, that is a good way to, like, put the candidacy up, though. That is definitely how you do it. <laughs> yeah, I've been married twice. I don't need to be married again. Like, I'm just being honest here. <laughs> Losing all my shit twice is is enough of a lesson to uh to not want to do it a third time. People love you forever until that forever is not forever for them. <laughs> what about a husband? <laughs> no. I'm not looking for a husband either. Guys are very catty. Plus, I don't swing that way. So. <laughs> I like the ladies. Mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, see, the ear wouldn't be like that. It would be like this. Do you need a son? No, no, not even. People need to stop ask, telling me like if I need an expense. <laughs> Do you need an expense? Do you need something expensive in your life? <laughs> Do you need a son? Do you need a wife? Do you need a daughter? Do you need somebody <laughs> to spend your money on? That's essentially what I hear. That's what I'm hearing. Do you, need, do, you, do you need money? Do you need somebody to spend money on? When you, when you, when you don't have kids and, and you don't have anything to do like you know, like pay for other people's health insurance and food. Well, guess what? You get to do a lot of the shit you want to do. <laughs> you get to do a lot more of the stuff you like to do. And if you're not boring to yourself, uh, well, then that becomes a really good transactional situation. And I am definitely not bored with myself. <laughs> I hear myself talk every day and I don't hate myself. <laughs> Let's see. This looks a little weird because the proportions are different. Let's change them a little bit. There you go. And the nose is a little bit big. Let's change it normal. How often do you go live? I go live every day. Every single day. I am here to teach you guys how to draw cool stuff, talk to you guys about life as an artist. Talk to you guys about the struggles you guys will face. Talking about the things that are awesome about you too, not just the negative, you know? Like I hate just talking about negative. I'm not the news. I don't I don't have to tell you that the world is ending. I can tell you the world is uplifting and lovely and amazing and that you are a big part of it and then that it's more beautiful because you're part of it. I can tell you that. And it's true. I do have a YouTube and it has all my old videos on it. Well, most of them, not all. Some of them get corrupted by uh, by TikTok, as in they they like um, they don't download properly, so sometimes they just don't happen to be saved. But if I can, and if they save nicely, I tend to do like little snippets, so you guys have them on my page, and then I tend to do uh, big um, like videos for YouTube. So compass. Again, compass, compass. The compass is really good. Compass is really strong. The compass gives you a cylinder. Boop, boop, boop. The cylinder gives you access to drawing your head in cool ways. Okay? This compass, boop, boop. You connect the bottom of your ears, find your ears, 
the bottom of your ears, you connect them to the middle of the compass. And now you have your neck. Congratulations. Yay. Now you have all your neck muscles. If you want a trachea, aka like a voice box, it's like a little diamond that's right there, but you only draw the front part of the diamond. Okay? And then the muscles wrap around and go around to the back. So that's if you want to draw trachea, if you want to draw something like a voice box, it's literally like right there, like an Adam's apple. It's just in the middle line. So find the middle line of your neck, and then go boop, boop. Ear to collarbone, ear to collarbone gives you the other ones. Okay, cool. All right, so when you put it that way, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, of course it does, because that's how it connects. So wherever you find your ear to be, Remember, you find your spine, and you find circle number one for your jaw, circle matching circle number two for your neck. Cool? Done. So once you find your ear, you go ear to the front of your collarbone, the opposite side of your spine. You find your other ear, and you go bottom of the ear to the collarbone. And then you can find the midline, like you find the midline for your head, find the midline for your neck, and then decide how big of a trachea you want. Ta-da! From there, draw a little triangle. The little triangle will give you access to a nose because it's a pyramid, a triangle coming out of a... A dot coming from a triangle gives you a pyramid. So you can draw that pyramid in any direction you want. Let's make it really big. And then you just use your imagination to add the little wings to your nose. Okay, cool. This, the top of that triangle, if you follow it down, you're going to get your eyeballs. Oh, and it also gives you that little division where your nose comes out and your eyebrows come in. So it gives you the nose bridge. If you follow your nose bridge around your eye and you follow your eyebrow around your eye, you end up with your cheekbone. Connected back to that triangle. So now it's gonna look like this. Start your face, midline, triangle, right? The nose is gonna be coming out of here, connecting back there. From those triangle lines, I'm going to go down, and then I'm going to go up. Up gives me access to my eyebrows. Wherever that eyebrow, wherever you draw it, this edge is going to be the side of your face. The moment that your eyebrow touches, the rest of your face becomes the side of your face. Why? Because this is your temple. This is the side of your eye socket. Okay? When you're drawing an actual skull... the top ridge of your eye socket ends up coinciding with your brow muscle. So if you go around it, you end up with your cheekbone. And this also ends up being your temple. This is really important and useful when you do this. <laughs> when you draw any character and you find the eyebrow, that automatically becomes the side of your face. See? So that is something that happens. Just, it just happens naturally. So whenever you're drawing a character and you draw your eyebrow, that eyebrow is now the indicator of the side of the face. And if you go around, it gives you your cheekbone and it gives you your eye socket. And that eye socket going around gives you a triangle meeting with the front of your face and that gives you access to your mouth. This becomes your teeth line. This is your teeth. Don't think about this as your jaw. Think about like the line that you come across like this. This is going to make mouths so much easier for you. Boom. Imagine that you have that front line, right? Everybody gets to this point and they're like, okay, cool. What do I do now? Consider that line, this line. Consider this your teeth. Okay? Just consider it your teeth. 
If you consider it your teeth, you can just wrap your mouth around it. Wrap a line around your teeth. Right? That line comes down. Wrap a line around that line. And you have yourself mouths. That's it. That's all you need to do. Find whatever flat line is underneath that triangle and then wrap a curvy line around it. And that's your teeth line. So wherever you find that little triangle, you already have your teeth line as well. Go down. That's your teeth line. You can draw as big as you want, as stylized as you want. It's going to always keep your teeth in the right place. Okay? So understanding that, understanding that helps a shit ton. <laughs> so let's get me to 20K likes. And while I sip a coffee... And I rest my hand for a second. But let's get me there. And meanwhile, just play around with drawing some mouths. Draw a triangle. Draw a line down, like a little house. And then have fun drawing one curvy line and one little line underneath. Congratulations. You now know how to draw mouths. And that's in every angle possible. Okay? It doesn't change. You can draw this in every angle. Now you know that you draw a dot and you have a nose. So you draw a dot wherever you want that nose to be, and then it's a nose. Cool. So now you know those two body parts. <laughs> profile, triangle in a profile. You go down, that's your teeth line. Wrap from one point to the other, so it goes around this. Da -da -da. And you have yourself your lips, you have yourself your spacing. And you just go back into that line. <laughs> Thank you. I have to go get ready for work now, but bet bottom dollar I'll be working. Hey, that's, that's a good threat to have, buddy. That's a good threat to do. <laughs> so... Now that we understand a little bit more about that, how do we make variations of that? Well, it's really easy. Once you get there, let's say you want a character with really big lips. Well, the lips just have more girth, <laughs> right? They just have more volume because they are poofier. So that lip gets pushed out more. No lips. Stick close to the stay close to the teeth. Like no lip stays close to the to the teeth. With lips, you need to have that volume come out from your teeth. So your volume, like that little tiny leverage that you have here, the one that you like is a pain in the ass sometimes, those little like tiny like bumpies is divided like this. You draw a triangle, you draw a fan. And that fan is going to give you access to either the top or the bottom lip, depending on how you get used to that. But it gives you one of your curvy lines. That fan can be adjusted to be as big as you need it. The negative space for your teeth stays the same. So if you want to draw things like the Joker and stuff like that, you take it from the outside edge of your nose, of that triangle, and then you use a little fan to come up with that cheek part. Triangle, nose, fan, and then I can use that to generate my mouth really easy. Yes, it has. The name of his, yeah, it's the name of my TikTok. And you guys can find all the links in my bio. Like, I have a bio description that gets, that takes you to my shop, that takes you to everything. 
This is a pain in the ass sometimes because you got to remember that your mouth has a little curvature, right? So whenever you find those triangle lines, remember that keeps him in place. This helps you understand how much of a curvature you need to do. Remember that you're going to have to draw through your shapes because shapes go around stuff, okay? The mouth is not necessarily just a flat line. When it expands, when it opens, it's kind of like a sphere too. Look, when it's closed, it's kind of flat. When it starts opening, it starts to have a little bit of roundness to it. Right? The more roundness it has, the more you need to create roundness for. So if your mouth is opening in the way of like a sphere, right? It's kind of like this on an oval. Once we get used to this little oval and we get used to that top line, we can draw mouths by just drawing two curvy lines. One curvy line, two curvy lines. Make the top one a little darker, make the bottom one lighter, and you have yourself mouths. Curvy line number one. It's just not about knowing that it doesn't go all the way around. It doesn't go all the way around here. That would be more like, I don't know, like a dog mouth or something. Okay? So it doesn't do that. It doesn't go all the way around. It goes around and a little bit. the extra distance that you draw right here, you're creating a lot more length. So if you needed something like a crocodile, it would be something like that, right? So you don't wanna do that for a human, so you wanna keep that curvature small so you have that roundness to it still, but it's not an overwhelming amount that's going to throw off your drawing. We are not animals. <laughs> well, we are animals, but we're not that kind. Like, we don't have that type of jaw structure. Um, the triangle gives us our nose. If you're drawing something like a, an animal, you can make that triangle big that covers the whole bottom part. Draw whatever shaped nose you want for the top. I like a little bean bag and I connect it as well. And I have myself access to drawing animals of all sorts and sizes. All shapes and sizes. Depends on what I want to create. Okay? Even down to like birds and stuff. Understanding how this little triangle magically gives you a skull by just, again, continuing up. It gives you access to drawing pretty much anything with a skull. Anything with a skull is fair game now. Let's say you want to draw something cool like a dragon, right? Let's draw a dragon. Let's draw a shape, a triangle at the front. How do top of the noses the dragons have? They have like pointy noses, right? So we do that. They have big necks. And then the jaw structure comes from either here, and I can even open my mouth by just taking that triangle line and then just opening it. <laughs> it gives me access to so much knowledge and just by visualizing it a little bit different than what I've been taught my whole life to do that didn't make any sense. Uh, give it a little width. width. And so you want to draw a cute panda. It is a very versatile technique for anything with a skull. So... Go ahead and use it to your heart's content. 
it's actually really, really fun to be able to know that you can draw pretty much anything with the skull. <laughs> All right, any questions? Any questions, my friends? I feel in a giving mood today. Did you live for Mart? Did I live for Mart or do I live? <laughs> Did I live from art? Yes, I lived once. And then I passed away. And then I came back and I didn't make a living with art anymore. But I did it once. <laughs> yes, I do. I make my living with art. And I teach people how to do that. Floral art, huh? So... That's going to depend on you being able to actually draw flowers. And if you want to draw flowers and you want to draw like different plants and different foliage so you can get better and learn to do patterns and stuff like that, you need to go out and actually draw the plants because plants and weeds and stuff like that come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, right? They come in a bunch of different variations and the only real way to get exactly the one that you want is by going out and actually seeing how they're constructed. Things like trees and flowers are very different from each other, and they tend to have different structures and different ways of being constructed. Let me zoom out a little bit. I like going out with a highlighter, getting the general shapes of these things, right? And then I go in with my pen, and then I detail things. So I get the general volume for things. And then I go in and I detail things as needed. So paying attention to how big the middle part of the flower is, as comparison to the petals, what angles do the petals go in? Are they like rectangular? Are they circular? Are they overlapping with each other? Are they changing colors at the base? Are they not? Does it have pollen? Are the colors contrasty enough that I can just add a little shade and make it look differently? Is the stem, is the stem like that? Or is the stem round? Does it go around? Is it messy? Does it have thorns? Does it have branches? Does it have extra petals? Overlapping lines will give you things like roses and stuff like that. Okay? Overlapping lines and knowing how to overlap them is going to give you access to drawing little plants with depth. In learning how, again, bushes and stuff like that interact with your actual plants is what's going to be able to give you the, the access to that knowledge that you really desperately want. Right? The knowledge for drawing plants is a very simple thing. Learn overlapping lines. Learn how to overlap your lines so you can create depth really easy. And go out and draw plants. You're going to suck at it for a while. But eventually you'll realize they're all like little zigzags and there's no really perfect tree. There's no perfect plant. There's no perfect art. So once you feel comfy, that's good. Once you feel and you get one that you like, that's good. That's, that's a good benchmark. You like it. That's all that matters. You enjoy it. You not the public, not Instagram, not everyone that follows you online. No. If they like it, doesn't matter. <laughs> a like from them means nothing. A like from you, the creator, the person that drew it, the person that is creating this beautiful art that you're going to be showing other people, you have to like your own stuff. <laughs> And if you don't like your stuff, why would anybody else want to? It's a very simple concept. Make things that you want to see for yourself, and then others will come. Others will come because they want to see. They want to be a part of it. People enjoy being a part of the progress, the, the growth of you know, people that are passionate, 
People that, even if you don't understand the hell you're doing, they just want to be a part of cool people that just think what they like is cool. So if you want people to follow you, you got to give them a reason to follow you. And that's not cool art. <laughs> cool art is not the reason why. Cool art is the, um, the catalyst of why they're there, right? They have to be there for something that you provide that gives them value of coming back over and over. What is that? Is it your life? Is it your stories? It's not going to be the level of art. I promise you that. It's not the level of art. It's not how good you draw. It's not. It's not. That's like the least important part. There's so many accounts with so many wonderful, talented artists that don't grow for shit. Why? Because nobody wants to see just finished art. Nobody does. Nobody does. I don't want to see just finished art. And I'm an artist that, like, does this shit. I don't want to see pretty art because pretty art, like the finished pretty art, I can't relate to that. I can't relate to that. I can't be like, oh, I can do that. Oh, I could totally do that. That is what I'm looking for when I'm drawing, when I'm looking at other people's stuff. Oh my God, I can do that. Instantly inspired. Right? You're like, oh, oh, he drew a nose out of a triangle. Ah, oh, what? I got to go do that. Does it work? Ah, oh, it does. Oh, my God. Oh. And then you got the person hooked. You gave them something to be proud about. That is the next catalyst, right? The next catalyst in growth for your social media accounts is can you make something, somebody feel better for having followed you? Can, is someone going to feel better about their lives or are you going to in any way shape or help them so that their, your account becomes invaluable to them. That's hard to match. That's a hard catalyst to match. And that's, again, why so many people fall short. They don't aim for that. They aim to just be like, oh, I'm just going to draw something cool and I hope that people follow me. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. Yeah, unfortunately, it's, yeah, time lapses work really nice. Time lapses are actually one of the most profitable ways to get like money on Patreon and stuff like that. When you go on Patreon, a lot of people offer their time lapses for their illustrations because a lot of people learn a lot from them. Okay, a lot of people see you draw. That's why I draw live. That's why I draw in my sketchbook instead of giving you guys a video and just talking. Because I need to show you guys that the concepts that you guys are trying to achieve, they're not impossible and they're not really hard. They're just explained horribly. Absolutely horrendously. And I suffered through that throughout my whole career. I suffered through understanding shitty teachers until I had to make my own ways of understanding things. But once I did, it was like, oh, yeah, well, they didn't really understand it themselves, so that's why they were teaching it that way. Because I go back and I... You can call me petty, you can call me whatever you want, right? But I go back to my old teachers, and I'm like... I, like, try to see where they were when they were teaching me, just so to see if they actually knew what they were talking about. Because a lot of people can be very passionate about things. You can be incredibly passionate and be a horrendous person in a field. You just have to be the loudest and you'll get attention. <laughs> right? If you are the loudest person in the group, you will get attention. Maybe not for the good reasons, but you'll get attention. And a lot of people learn that that's the way to get into the art field too. Because it works. Be the loudest and you will get rewarded. Why? Because... Art in general is a thing that where the cockiest person gets the job. Okay? A cocky person gets the job. It's just going to happen. The person that can make the employer feel like they are the most amazing human being on the planet, they were there just to strictly make their marketing materials better. If you can make a client think that, you got them. 
Can we, what is it? Can we sum up your sketchbook page? Oh, oh, you guys want to see the sketchbook pages? Yeah. Here, I'll show you guys some old sketchbook. We lift sketchbooks, turn, turn, turn. What is the sketchbook that we shall see first? Okay, so this one is from 2017. And this one's falling apart, as you guys can see. Don't get cans in books. Cans in books are shit. Uh, and these pages are really thin, so I could barely draw on both sides. That's why I drew in highlighter. Okay. These are all reference. Don't get too impressed. At that point, I was all reference material. Okay. But what I did like to do... How do I get rid of that screen? There you go. I used to like documenting my life. This is why I decided to join and do my artwork. Because I wanted to document my life in a journal type of situation. Right? My life is not very interesting to other people. No, no, it's not very interesting to me. But it seems to be interesting to other people. So I like to document it so that maybe later on, whenever I have a chance to sit down and like think about my life, I'm going to be able to live it through that. So yeah, this... Oh, I used to draw you guys too. <laughs> I used to draw my followers. So you guys would send in a pose, which is something that I might do again. Uh, if you guys send in a pose, then I will draw you guys with <laughs> with them. Uh, one of my exes went in and ripped all the pages of the sketchbooks that had drawings of people, but some of them survived the purge. <laughs> yeah, so it was really, really fun. Whenever you guys sent in pictures, see? <laughs> rage! The rage! <laughs> Of the, of the ex. <laughs> Anything that was based on her, she didn't care, of course. To -do 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 -do. Yeah. Munchies! Oh, munchies. Oh, this guy was fun to draw. And Archie. Archie, of course. I have weird... <laughs> I have weird thoughts. <laughs> But yeah, there was all oh, oh, my friend Rosemary Cordova. Her name is Silky, and she is awesome, and you guys should go follow her. She is a wonderful soul, too. She's one of the loveliest human beings I've ever met. Boom, boom, boom. When I was trying to take, play with different styles, and then, like I said, I would share my life a lot with people. So here, let, let's talk about what depression was for me back then. Depression is a hard thing to explain. It affects people, everyone, very differently. For me, it's hard, empty hole. I feel alone, and it's a hard void to get out of. I hate telling people, because everyone around you wants to help. Just be happy. Why are you so sad? You're so talented. Just be nice, Rod, be nice. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I, I'm just overly apologetic sometimes. Be positive, cheer up. See how good you have it, but you are living the dream. You have it so much worse than you. Man up. Just love yourself. Yeah, that's the shit that I hear all the time. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's so incredibly annoying having to explain to people that that's not how it works. <laughs> but documenting it and drawing, uh, I draw myself a lot too. <laughs> and I like cute girls with animals. Derpy animals. Oh, when we barely got to 40K. Oh, that was so cute. Now we're like almost at 200,000 on Instagram. We're like at 320 something thousand on TikTok. Uh, videos. I was doing videos back then too. So that's like over seven years ago that I was doing videos. To do, to do. To do. Anatomy was a big part. A lot of it was referencing at this point. Some reference work from other artists. Uh, I realize I've improved a lot from the start of this sketchbook. See, I was thinking of improvement even then. Like, just constantly. Trying to copy some styles. 
trying to see if I could copy the the old school styles from Flapjack, One Punch Man. Uh, short term goals: reconnect with good friends, be proud of what I work I do, work out a little each day, and remember to adventure a little bit more. Good advice, Rod. Good advice. Do 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 do. So I do play a lot of League of Legends. I used to. And Ziggs is one of my favorite characters. Also is Ari. Street Fighter. Again, I was drawing you guys as... Uh, whenever you guys sent in pictures, I would draw you guys. Uh, I don't know if TikTok allows pictures to be sent. But I might start that up again at some point. Do do do. And that was Coffee Break Doodles number seven. And that is it. And the people that draw on my page. <laughs> and we finished this sketchbook. Boom. That was from 2017. We have improved a lot since then. <laughs> Uh, hell of a boss character. Does your care skull method work for Blitz? I don't know. No, Blitz is the... Um, well, it's a robot, right? So a robot could easily be done by using those methods. Just finding the actual skeletal system. And then choosing whatever style you want instead of... So you can draw whatever you want from them. Whatever you like decide to draw is up to you. Like it's really like just a system to help you understand placement. An imp, oh, I don't, okay, then even better. If you have a character that's like an imp or like golem or something like that, just change the proportions within those circles and you have yourself a character akin of a goblin or just change the proportions a little bit and you have yourself anything you want. Well, Blitz in uh, League of Legends is. Can you do that? <laughs> that doesn't work. How does that not work? Shape, mages are doing it wrong. Triangle, triangle line up. Triangle line up to the edge of my shape. The edge of this is gonna be the side of my head and then this becomes my face. My nose, whatever angly nose I want for an imp. The middle of this is my ear. This becomes my eyebrow ridge. <laughs> this, the top of the triangle, becomes my eyeball. So you, you tell me where it doesn't work. You, you please explain to me how and where this does not work. And then I will uh, gladly alter this exactly to where you state it. If this doesn't make sense to you, that's fine. But I would like to know so that you so that I can become a better teacher. So I will take your criticism and I will gladly, gladly adapt it. But you got to tell me more than just that it didn't work because that's just dumb. Constructive criticism is only constructive criticism if you give something to construct out of. How did you learn about anatomy and then adapt? I, I started checking out how the body works. Like, I started looking at my own face. Let's start it with my own face. And I was like, okay, my nose is kind of like, like bulbous like this for me, right? I have a big nose. But whenever I scrunch, I have a lot of wrinkles. So I would start seeing a bunch of wrinkles pop up. And I started seeing this pattern of like an hourglass shape. All right? 
this hourglass shape was very prominent, and then that hourglass shape would just change and merge depending on what type of facial style I needed. Depending on what type of facial like thing, that would just move up and down, but the bottom wouldn't change. And then little by little, I would start going, okay, well, if the bottom doesn't change, I can just draw my cheekbones like this, but the top line from the eyeball up, that can start changing. That could be your eyebrow line. But how do you simplify this in a way that makes sense? And I just started starting with a triangle. And I started following guidelines. And I started ending up with this general shape, which would give me access to all that knowledge really, really quickly. And whenever I needed to change the eyes, the eyebrows, I would just map out to the edge of my cheekbone and then I can adjust this top line to whatever type of facial structure I want. So understanding that this doesn't move, but this top can help me understand that. And then learning to draw the side of the face was just a matter of paying attention to where the eyebrows hit. Where does the head go from round to flat? And it happens to be right at the top of the eyebrow where the eyebrow hits. You can look at yourself in the mirror if you want. And that's going to be roughly where your head goes to the side. So now if we combine these two, this gives you my eye socket and the side of my face. So any shape, any shape where I draw my eyebrow gives me my eye socket and it gives you the side of my face. Duplicate this shape, and I have myself an actual structure for a skull. And from any shape that I draw. I'm trying to help you understand. Ah, let's look at what you want to understand. I'm not, you're not part of just like, the, I'm not paying attention to you. That's the thing. I'm clicking. How do you got learning? What did you ask? Evelyn Feather, I'm trying to help you understand. I'm trying to help you understand. I don't know what you're saying, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to distract my lesson <laughs> like for you, period. That's just not how it works. Uh, how would you do anthropomorphic characters? Uh, and, and that's just characters with human styles, right? So learn to draw a human body. Learn to draw a human body really, really easy. Like simply. Not easy, simply. The human body is not easy. The human body is structured horribly. It's so incredibly difficult. And then from there, give yourself all the animal features that you want. Do, 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 do. What do you do if your art gets stolen? Cool. Look, my art, you're talking to the wrong person. Um, I put out all my artwork in books, the art block books, right? The ones that I have for sale. Those are filled with all my artwork that I normally draw in my sketchbooks. And I expect people to use it to be able to do their stuff better. Um, I, use, I give you guys that as reference work so that you guys don't have to think about how to draw a mouth. You guys can just go to a page with mouths and just see it and learn it and draw it. You guys don't have to worry about drawing heads. There's a quadrillion heads and stuff like that inside of them. So you guys don't have to do anything else other than take a picture of the one you guys like and then change it to whatever styling you want. Right? That's what I do. I, I like helping people. So to me, I don't, you can steal my artwork, I guess. You're not going to be able to recreate it. You're not going to be able to do much with it. Like, you're not going to be able to get the styling that I do or anything. Eventually, I'll find out, and then it's going to be a big problem for that person. But 
you know, like worrying about it is just irrelevant. Like, what if, what if, what if, like, yeah, what if, like, what if someone steals my design and makes a ton of money? Well, that means that your design is worth a lot of money. So you can also market it for that. If somebody else can make a shit ton of money with it, you can make a shit ton of money with it. That means that your art is valuable. That means that your art is productive. That means that your art is actually worth stealing. That means that you're ready to be able to move in and do the things that the person that stole your work is trying to do with your work, right? So instead of seeing it like, oh my God, they're stealing my work, like, oh shit, this guy's telling me exactly what I can do with my artwork so that I can sell it. Like, don't see it as like, oh my God, they stole, like, no, pay attention to what they're doing. You can always report it later, but pay attention to what they're selling with it. Make the right move. <laughs> Learn from the stealers. Learn from the scammers. Learn. They know how to make money. <laughs> and they're showing you. They're showing you. <laughs> so if someone does steal your money, steals your artwork, Pay attention how they're using it because they're giving you a fucking guide. <laughs> Who cares if they just repost it? Who cares? Who cares? They can't recreate it. They're just giving you free advertisement. Who cares? I think it might have to be published before it's yours. Not really. No, not. the thing is, again, again, you guys are worrying about the silliest thing in the world. You guys are worrying about if someone steals your artwork. First of all, the internet is full of artwork, right? Fully rendered, finished, everything. There is not a thing on the internet that you can't find reference for that does not exist, right? So first of all, you have to really, really understand that not everybody wants your artwork, okay? There's other people that are easier to steal from, period. <laughs> so your, your fear is based on you thinking your artwork is so, so incredibly popular that if you put it out there, people will steal it completely. Oof. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know where to start with that. Um, no. <laughs> it's like thinking every single woman in the world wants to hit on you just because you're a dude. No. No. That's not how it works. <laughs> so just just be um, a little bit less uh, like worried about someone stealing. It, it reminds me a lot of the people that think that when they go to Mexico, they're going to get kidnapped, right? Like, oh my God, if I go to Mexico, they're going to kidnap me. I'm like, no, Debbie, no, you are like a, a, a normal lady from fucking San Diego. Uh, and you're not even big enough to stuff with drugs. So no, no one wants to kidnap you, Debbie. No one wants to kidnap you. <laughs> no one gives a shit about you. Okay, you, let's go get tacos. <laughs> yeah, it's so, so ridiculous. It's so stupid. Like, it's just fears that have absolutely no relevance to you. So when you, when you keep on thinking, oh, what if someone steals my artwork if I put it out? Well, guess what? Then it's cool. Then you get street cred. If someone steals your artwork, you get street cred. And I'll send you a book. <laughs> I'll send you a free book. Congratulations, you are now ready. <laughs> you were kidnapped in Mexico, huh? Uh, it seems like you actually either had a good time, Miss Honeypot, <laughs> because otherwise they wouldn't be posting that little happy face. So being kidnapped and enjoying it is not necessarily, it's not a drawback. <laughs> I got kidnapped to Cancun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
You are ridiculous. <laughs> Silly people. Anyways, uh, you guys want to hit me? Uh, you guys want to get me close to fifty k? You guys want to uh, click that little heart button? Uh -huh. Take a sip of coffee. If you guys have more questions, though, Perry will lose their subscription benefits soon. Well, luckily for you, there's no subscription benefits because I don't really do exclusive stuff for people. So if you lose your subscription, that's fine. It's okay. That's fine. I don't expect people to subscribe. Good artist copy, great artist steal. Yeah. Yeah. For example, like it sounds really weird, but if if I were to just go and observe someone's artwork for like 20 minutes, I can copy it. Like I can copy most art styles now uh and yeah it does feel a little bit weird understanding that if i just felt like it i can just draw like other people and then make the money that they make <laughs> it's a very cool superpower to have and then choosing not to that that's the that's the strictness of it like having the ability to do something does not mean that you should And again, that's another lesson that is normally very difficult for people to understand until they have presented themselves in those situations. Mm -hmm. Hmm. With great power comes great responsibility. And you know what? If I was a, if I had superpowers, I would be such a villain. I'd be a villain. I'd be a supervillain. Like I'd be like like I'd be the best supervillain ever because I know how every supervillain messes up. So I'd just be like unstoppable. Like I would I would like okay, okay. When I play Skyrim and stuff like that, nope, lawful? Uh-uh. Nah, I'm lawful and nice and kind every day. I am like the nicest human being ever. In video games, I turn to chaos. I'm like, I am the karma bringer. Oh, you killed someone? Okay, you shall die. But then I will destroy the whole city. <laughs> like, it's just like, it's funny. It's, it's awesome to like break out of your normal like character. And like go with the opposite just just to indulge and have fun. <laughs> like if you always go for like the soup like I, I went in every town in Skyrim and I try to collect the biggest bounty that I could. Um yeah, when you go in and raise every town and you kill everyone in every town, it's really hard to buy stuff. So you end up building like a black market dealer from like the DLC packs. And I was like, yes, I don't need towns anymore. So I went and I like killed everybody in the towns. And then, and then they, like, I didn't know they sent bounty hunters for you. They send bounty hunters in the game. So you'll like randomly get hit with like almost a critical death blow. And then since I had a cool strategy, right? I had a, I had a really cool strategy. I had like seven companions. I, I understood that they had companions and you get companions if you go follow missions. I just never finished the missions. So I had like seven companions plus I had my like summonings. So I had up to like eight people fighting for me as an army. Every single time that I would fight anybody, I finished the game incredibly easy. Uh, but it was like, okay, I would get like all these bounties set on me. And then the moment that I would get attacked, I would just disappear. <laughs> Vanishing, summon, summon, summon. And then all my dudes would kill these super high, like efficient like attackers and I'd steal their gear. And they would be like, ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you can't get me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I used to do a lot of playing games instead of sleeping before I discovered streaming. <laughs> Before I discovered streaming, it was like I was just played video games, and I'm actually quite decent at them. I used to play a lot of Magic: The Gathering too. <laughs> Boom. 
Boom, boom. I'll talk about hair in another stream. So uh, I'm not not hearing you. I'm just not paying attention to you because it's not part of the stream today. So if it's something that's not really relevant to what I'm teaching or what I'm drawing and trying to focus on, I don't want to talk about it. And I'm because not because I, I'm trying to be rude to you or anything. It's just more like I'm trying to keep the lessons consistent. I'm trying to keep the lessons within a structure so that we have a certain topic that we talk about. And then we just build up from there. And then we actually have solid videos that we can upload to YouTube and like clips and stuff like that that we can actually benefit from. Uh, when we jump around too much from one to the other, uh, just different concepts, it just becomes really muddied up. And a lot of people have uh, trouble uh, continuing on and following the videos on YouTube. The moment that I started doing it like more structured, I started getting a lot more views and a lot more uh, engagement in general. What's the lesson today? We've just been drawing faces. So we've been talking about like the structure of the face, how you guys can see it, how you guys can apply it, little tiny things like the rotation of the mouth and how that applies to the nose and how you guys can start by just drawing a little triangle in a little house. Draw a dot, connect the dots, and you have a nose. And then this is your teeth line, so just draw a curvy line around your teeth and add negative space, and you have yourself a mouth. Can you draw a nose from? Yeah. Triangle, dot, nose. That little line for your teeth gets pulled up and your teeth have a curvature. Your lip has depth. And your lips overlap at this level. As well as your chin. Your eyebrows be around here, eyes. So yeah, when you're drawing your head up, it's very easy to practice it by drawing a simple sphere, drawing a nose, and then seeing if you can rotate it up. See if you can rotate it down. See if you can draw it from the side. Your choice of actually exercising these things is up to you. It's not hard to draw a guideline and draw a mouth and draw mouths in all styles and all guidelines. It's not hard to do this. It's boring sometimes for people, but it's not hard. And when you want to practice getting even better, you combine all the elements together. See what I mean? If you want to practice, you have a way to practice. You just need time. But once it clicks, once something clicks, it doesn't matter what direction you draw this in. You're going to be able to draw faces a lot more effectively just because you practiced all these little simple things. Okay, doing this helps you understand the rest of the system. So understanding concepts that are simple and then using your imagination, you can make those into more complex systems. Remember, you're, you're imaginative people. You're creative human beings. You guys don't have to just do what people tell you, okay? If someone tells you, this is how you draw a mouth, but that's not how it works for you, find another way. Find a way that makes sense to you, a way that you can control, a way that you can understand, okay? Trying to climb a tree when you don't have, if you're a little fishy, and we say this all the time. If you're a little fishy and someone's trying to teach you how to climb a tree, you're going to feel like an idiot your whole life. 
You're going to feel incompetent. You're going to feel like you can't do the thing that that other character can do so much easier. Okay? A monkey and a fish need to be in different situations to flourish. Okay? If you are a person that learns one way, that doesn't mean that that method is going to work for the next. You need to be in a situation where you are allowed to flourish with the techniques and the ways that you visualize things. And if you can't find that, if you can't find that in the methods that I'm teaching, there's a lot of other teachers that explain it differently. Okay? If you don't see things like me, like if you don't see things through volume, right? If you guys don't have the ability to do that yet, you guys might be able to draw through stylization, which is fine. It's just another different way to do it. If you are happy, if you're joyful with your art, it doesn't matter how you approach it. All you need is a finished, satisfactory piece of art that is going to make you happy enough to draw another, and then another, and then another. Okay? I remember loving legendary custom longboard art from you. Oh my God, legendary was great. <laughs> Um, legendary was like these, like, I think, I think they're still there. I think they still have skateboards. Like, I think they still sell them, but it was like a really cool thing. Cause it was the first time that a company allowed me to draw pinups for a skateboard. And it was, um, I'm not going to say they were the best, but I was really, really proud of them. And it was one of the first times that I ever got my artwork on actual products. So it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. And it wasn't this design either. It was just this drawing. Yeah, that's where I got my beginning. I got my start in skateboard art. Like I used to be a skateboarder and I wanted to do something with that community. So I just offered my services to a bunch of companies. And like uh, at the end of my career there in that industry, I had worked with like over 60 or so companies. I'd been published in magazines. I've been recognized worldwide again for my things. All that before I even got recognized for anything else. That was the initial, I won contests, competitions. I, I, I came in first in like a bunch of like popularity contests and stuff like that. Uh, companies just clamored for me back then. And it was awesome. So uh, that's where I got my initial... What's a pinup? A pinup is normally a drawing of like a cute girl or a cute guy that you find cute enough to pin up on your wall. So if it's anything, anything can be a pinup really, but most of the time they're like more so kind of like cute girls doing something like being in a car or just like being cute and sexy. That seems to be like what a pinup is in my eyes, right? If you combine that with like a little cute animal or something like that, that's really, really much like more strong in my opinion. And that's why most of the time whenever I draw really cute girls, let's see. Beam, beam, beam. Cute girls. I tend to draw them with some sort of animal companion. It's just, that's the thing, or a cute animal thing, you know, a cute creature or whatever. Being able to move the human figure into any position you want, that's very important. That takes a long time to learn, though. Because without having that access to that, then you don't really have access to uh, storytelling completely. Until you have access to moving and posing your characters how you want, you don't have access to complete storytelling. You have access to kind of half storytelling. But yeah, like little by little, you just learn to adapt things. And the more comfy you get, the more... You can deviate that to things like animals and monsters and do random shit from nothing. <laughs>
I try to fill every inch of my sketchbooks. Every inch. So for me, it's my brain, since I am not a naturally gifted artist. I'm not. It might seem like it from what I'm drawing, but this is just a compilation of thousands and thousands and thousands of sketches and hours that compile into something that's barely decent. <laughs> you know, it's... Um, but understanding that you being able to get to this level is not unachievable. It's just going to take a little longer for my slower people like me. And you have to put the time in. Because if you don't put the time in and you don't put the effort, then it never comes. It's, it's something that you need to flourish. You need to set aside and take time to, uh, to nourish. And if you don't, it never comes. It's just not one of those things that you just get for drawing. No, you have to study. You have to really, really study and look deeper than you're used to so that you can break things down in a way that other people can't see. See what I mean? Like you, you need, if you want to stand out, you need to be able to see further. You need to see more than the average person. So taking the time to do so is invaluable, invaluable. Like you cannot measure that. So what I provide you guys is time to draw every day, time to draw and ask questions, somebody that you can guide you guys a little bit in a certain direction. And through my sketchbooks, which we almost filled this one up too, by the way, we're almost done with this one. <laughs> Look at that. Every page a lesson, every single page. Anyways, thank you guys so much for being my drawing buddies. I do sell my sketchbooks. They're my art block series. So I scan them in and then I sell them as my art block series. I choose the best pages and then I just uh, compile them all together. And they're like over a thousand sketches in each book. Like there's a hundred pages in each book filled with close to maybe like 50 sketches each. <laughs> so that's maybe 5,000, 10,000 sketches in each book. <laughs> easily. You guys have a lovely day. Enjoy your Sundays. If you guys are going to be safe and do not drink and drive or do anything dumb like that, we want to see you guys again tomorrow. Tune in for another lesson. Uh, I think I might hop onto YouTube in a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to hop on YouTube for a little bit. I'm going to stream there around 11. No, around noon. I'm, I'll hop on at noon. So I'll hop on at noon, I'll stream there for a little bit, and then I'll head out to pool. So yeah, that'll be, a, that'll be a nice way to finish the day. Take care, everybody. Love you all. Have a wonderful, 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 wonderful day. If you guys learned anything, please consider uh, either buying my books, consider sharing any of my knowledge with anyone else that you guys think might be useful. And if you guys want to do me a huge favor and tag me on your favorite art creator's tips, I'm going to start collecting tips so that I can, I, I, I want to rate art tips on, on TikTok and YouTube. I want to rate them. But I need you guys' help to, to guide me to good videos to rate. Okay? So if, if you guys want to help me create some awesome content this week, just help me by pointing me in the right direction. And I'm going to do a little cool uh, type of thing coming up. I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to move on to the next level. And I think it involves giving credit to other creators so that I can use my platform to showcase other people and to help correct any bad art tips that are out there right now. I do want to be the best art teacher. I want to be the fucking best. Yeah, 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 I'm doing that. That's, that's just going to happen. <laughs> so you guys have a lovely, lovely day. Take care. I'll see you guys soon for another lesson. And I hope you guys learned a lot today. Love you all. Bye-bye.